Hi, everybody. How's it going? Oh, wait, these are local Emmys behind me. They don't count. <laughs> Good. Oops. Oh, my God. Welcome to EW's Binger Community, where we're taking a deep dive into the cult classic comedy. I'm Derek Lawrence. And I'm Chancellor Agard. It's Chance, we made it. We're seniors. Uh, today, we're talking season four. Um, which I know is a, is a complicated uh, season to talk about for fans, um, commonly known as, as the gas leak year. Um, but we're still we're still going deep on it uh, on this episode. We're, we're completists. We're completists. You know? Yeah, we absolutely. I, I I never I never liked when people were like, oh, just skip this season, or oh, you can start at season two for a show. I'm like, nope, got to see it all. Um, <laughs> so, and we're, that's what we're doing. So on this episode, we're actually joined by not one but two our favorite Greendale alums. We have Jim Rash and Joel McHale, um, which is obviously great because the Jeff Dean relationship is one of the best on the show, one of the funniest, um, and they were great together. Um, so we're looking forward to sharing that conversation with you. But I mean, let's get to it, Chance. Season four, obviously Dan Harmon, the creator, is not involved. Um, they bring in some new writers, some new showrunners. Um, for you, what's your memory of season four? Do you, was it as bad as you remembered? Was it better than you remembered? Um, what, what, what did you think? I, I, but I, I remember when it aired though, and being very sort of disappointed, I guess, in what it was, I guess, or what that season was like. And so when I was rewatching, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's still not, not great. It's definitely a fall down for the show, a fall for the show. But I mean, I think, I mean, I did find stuff to like, you know? I mean, there's no getting around it. And like, you know, Joel really talks specifically about this and he's like, hey, you know, if you like, if you liked the show that season, like, thank you. But like, you know, it's pretty obvious that it wasn't the same and that the cast members felt that. I, but yeah, like you said, I think there's still some quality stuff in here. Um, and we'll get into it later with Jim and also on our, in our own conversation. Uh, Jim wrote an episode here, Basic Human Anatomy, which is, I think, I would honestly say is maybe one of my favorite episodes in the whole series. Like, I think it's really well done. Um, obviously, there's a reason why Jim Rash is an Oscar winner. Um, the man, the man can write. Um, so there's still stuff to like, even if it's not um, the community that we grew to love in those first three seasons. So like I said, me and Chance will be back to talk a little bit more about season four. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but before that, let's go to our conversation with uh, Jim and Joel. Today we're talking season four. And with us today, we have uh, Joel McHale, who played Jeff Winger, and Jim Rash, who played Indeed Pelton. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks. thanks for, and thanks uh, for having us. What uh, we're talking season four is so like for you guys. What uh, what comes to mind first when thinking of season four? <laughs> well, you want to take this one, Jim? <laughs> well, I mean, season four was obviously an interesting season for us. Uh, we were without Dan for this season. I would say it was a little bit of a challenge, only because you you sort of relied on on on. Basically, Dan, who, mm -hmm. uh, along with the writers, all the writers, uh, had a very distinct understanding of of the story and the characters of community. Not that not that the writers did not during season four by any means, but you know you could you can't not feel a difference with any show, any show that's had a graduation of staff or a graduation of uh, to a new showrunner. If someone went on to develop a new show. Uh, that that's a that's a difficult task for anyone to um, take on. Congratulations, it's me. Huh, I see we've all reinvented ourselves over the summer. A little late to the hipster party, much? A little much on the much much. <laughs> there are certain shows that uh, need the person that created them to be with the show. There's very good examples of that, like. Breaking Bad, Arrested Development, Vampire Diaries, or even X Files, Chris Carter, and you, the person creates, has the culture in their brain, and the characters are their moms and dads and children and aunts and uncles and friends. And uh, the season definitely lost that magic part of it. And yes, there was. Uh, I thought Jim's episode was particularly a particular standout in the whole thing. Uh, and I think that Megan Gantz also, who uh, obviously has gone on to do some great things, uh, she really was a savior that season for the writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
I know it sounds, for those of you that enjoyed the fourth season, hey, thank you so much. And uh, I hope it doesn't look like we're sitting here complaining about the show that we were on. No, not at all. Uh, but it, when you're in it, it is definitely, um, you. it's your job and it takes up a lot of hours. And yeah, you're paid well for it, but that doesn't uh, mean you don't want to make great stuff. And uh, so in a, that was a very long way of saying when... Dan came back in season five. It uh, that's what the why this season has been referred to as the gas gas leak season, and uh, it's it's an interesting thing. It's still there's still some really good laughs, I think, and For sure. and if if you enjoy the series and enjoy the four season just as much, then uh, please tell me to shut up. But uh, that's being in it, it. That's it was a very different feeling. Yeah. I mean, I think, and Joel, you brought you brought up Jim's episode. Uh, that was one that we wanted to talk about because because it is a standout for, from the season. Uh, Jim, I'm curious. I mean, uh, I would love we love to hear sort of how I guess how you came to write an episode that season. Was it something that you pitched the producers on? Did they come to you? How did that all come together? You know, the, early on when we first started the season, uh, uh, they had asked me if I'd be interested in writing one, and. Uh, to be quite honest, it was interesting journey for what became what I think was called basic human anatomy. I had sort of, sort of started to pitch this idea, and it was a story that I started to formulate, and it completely just as stories sometimes do just fell apart. It wasn't it wasn't strong enough for an episode, and so I went in with the writers, and you know, there's lots of stuff uh, left over. I mean, uh, Dan would probably have, and all the writers had like just tons of like one word, two word, three word, long ideas for episodes that sit there and some will never get written. You know, I think Dan would joke. Some would, they'd come back to and, and leave. And one thing that was uh, talked about is uh, the desire to figure out a, a good storyline to break break up Troy and Britta to, um, to, to end that relationship. And one of the things that was up there was just the, I think it was just the, Freaky Friday was up on the board. And so along with Megan and all the writers there, uh, we were talking about uh, the body switch idea, like how, Troy's inability to to break up and what that could be like. So really it started with a, basically Freaky Friday and then a, a task, which was break up Troy and Britta. I was going to say that, I mean, that episode has to walk a really fine line between making the body swap funny and work, but then also staying true to sort of the emotional story there, which is Choi working through his feelings and being able to break up with Britta. I guess, how, I guess how hard, I guess how hard was it or figuring out that balance and making that work? It all, the, the, the main conceit of it mm -hmm. uh, fell on Danny and Donald's shoulders, which was to do basically play each other. And they both did it quite brilliantly you know uh, they know each other so well they had sort of picked up on each other's mannerisms for each character that's part of the the challenge and obviously they they made that happen but I think that at the core if you stick with the emotional idea that Troy cannot say the words and in an act of desperation uh, basically convinces Abed that they've switched bodies basically Abed realizes what Troy is asking him to do and then in front of Britta, Britta starts to realize what Abed is doing for his friend and ultimately Troy obviously says I have to grow up you know with the help mm. of, of Jeff and switch back and, and, and be a man in this moment and so it was it's, it, the emotional core of that story allows the concept to, to help it along without being spoof and then we were able to have fun with the stupidity of switching bodies by having the dean just pretend like he switched bodies with jeff for <laughs> no apparent reason other than to have a speech where he said that jeff was inside of him and i really think that was the way to have the lunacy and also have the heart at the same time with the same with the same concept you know I wish I had my own body back. <laughs> Sorry, routine light switch, Jeff. Yeah, and that um, the teen pretending to switch with Jeff was was so funny and. This season mm. featured a lot of, that was just one moment between uh, Jeff and the Dean in this season. And obviously like that dynamic between those two characters became such a great part of the show. Uh, what did you guys always enjoy about uh, putting 
uh, the Dean and Jeff in these situations and kind of getting more and more absurd with it as you went. That progressed, obviously, in, with any characters as, as a show starts uh, to age, it, like, like a wine, the characters begin to get, you get to know the characters. And uh, Jim... Jim's portrayal of the Dean. Uh, Jim, I'm going to compliment you, so please oh, plug your headphones. I can't wait for this. Headphones. I think that I'm recording. Uh, he, I always say he's Rumpelstiltskin, where he can spin. Where there is no laughs, he will spin them, and they, all of a sudden something will be funny, and it doesn't make any sense. that it Because it, it did not appear to be there before, and then out of nowhere. And uh, it was one of my favorite things when the Dean would come in and find a way to touch me. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> it was, I, I don't know what season that started. Do you, Jim? It started, I don't know exactly, but it was pretty early on. Jim, you'll know better than me. There was such a quick joke, but it was such a perfect joke for their relationship where I am in a hurry and I walk by the door of his office and I'm like, Dean, I need you. And then you just go, finally. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> like, shut the, sh- I need you. <gasps> it's happening. Shut the door. What? Hmm? Dean, I need you to give this DVD to Troy and Abed. Shut the door. <laughs> yep, shut the door. Like, like it was, he was so ready to, to like, I was like, finally, Jeff uh, <laughs> yes. decided to give this a try. And it yeah. was just such, it was just two, I mean, it was one sentence and it, like just barely any words. And I love mm. that sort of, th- I just loved it. So when you, and then you saw the way, like you see Jim in the, uh, the apocalypse now, episode and then you can see jim's insane range which Mm. really pisses me off and uh and but the best part one of the best parts about the dean is that his wardrobe was possibly the finest on the show yeah and jim got to take all that home i take it all really nice stuff i was gonna wear one for this one but you know i don't know it's just weird they're the smithsonian right yeah. This is, <laughs> preserve, this is preserve. Yeah. They're, they on, they're on loan. They're on loan right now. <laughs> it's Feline AIDS Awareness Day, folks, so let's whip it in the keister. Ding, 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 ding. Guys, Greendale's music department is flat baroque. <laughs> so we are having a fundraiser. What's Dean got to do with it? <laughs> Why, it's time to Tina Turner the clocks ahead. Happy daylight savings. Jim. His character was so important. The same way that Abed was kind of Dan's brain, Jim's character was this anchor of the school, and so many of the plot lines and were kicked off by him and okay, controlled literally. by him. Mm-hmm. And and it was it was ju- I don't know what sh- character to compare it to in in any other show, uh, but boy, it was so much fun. And Joe, I mean, at the top of this, you mentioned how there were, uh, how, yes, this was a difficult season for you guys and for us, but in in there, there were some laughs, some good laughs. I mean, I guess looking back at the season, what are the, um, after Basic Human Anatomy, that after Jim's episode, are there, what are the other episodes that come to mind that you look back on fondly? Uh, Megan wrote the finale of season four which was the darkest timeline and jeff has graduated and i thought that and the everyone faces off against their darkest timeline was was it felt very you could feel uh, the percolating uh presence of dan and then also i feel like um uh what was the one remember when you guys took um Malcolm McDowell hostage for a grade. It was another a good bottle mm-hmm. episode. I thought it was in your apartment. Yeah. Do you remember that? It was and the, Christmas, the Christmas episode. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is Andy Bobro maybe as well. Yeah. But but uh, so those are two that stick out to me that I thought uh, a great bottle episodes that utilized the core. Was cast. that the one where we had that uh, oneer in the beginning where we were putting up decorations in yes. my apartment? Yes. Yeah, that yes. was. That was yes. either going to take two days to shoot or an hour, and it we did it twice flawlessly. Yeah, I think it which was, was which is where you know I've won her for those of you watching. Uh, it's just <laughs> one shot that take and it lasted two and a half minutes, and it was very well choreographed. And if anybody screwed up, then it would have to be started we over do it. again. And uh, so I'm just saying ours was better than 1917. Our group's first grown-up Christmas party. Thanks for hosting. (laughs) 
Now that we're all here. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think Goodfellas was jealous of it. The Tristram Shapiro mm -hmm. did that one, I believe. Yes, he directed numerous episodes and that a year. great man. Great and man. A very nice guy. A uh, silly, silly accent, but a God, really great guy. I know. He needs to get rid of it. He he just thinks it's attractive. Hello, there. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello, Hi. Joel. My name's Bill Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> he would always introduce himself as Bill Sykes. I don't no, know why. The, I haven't sat and really watched them again. I think it's because it's like... Uh, uh, it's like your, ch it, it's, uh, I have like empty nest syndrome with the show. So I don't, it's hard for me to go look back at photos, like photos of when you're like kids are little. You're oh like, yeah. Oh, they're so cute. And I love them at that age. It hurts to, to, to cause you want that time again. And, yeah, uh, so you do now that I've been on other shows, you realize, well, and especially cause the show went six years, but the. Uh, the specialness of the relationships, especially with that group, was pretty remarkable. You you mentioned, you know, you haven't rewatched the seasons, but season four specifically kind of finally paid off the buildup of, of Jeff and his dad, you know, mm -hmm. and you you meeting, uh, we meet James Brolin and Adam Devine uh, as your brother. Uh, what did you like about, from what you remember, kind of finally exploring that relationship for Jeff? Well, I was just happy to meet James Brolin. <laughs> uh, and then Adam Devine, I've got, I got to know him. So that was really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, it's fun. Uh, I, um, it's funny cause I think Dan and I could be talking out of turn here. I don't think Dan ever wanted to actually him to actually, uh, be a care. Uh, his dad, act, well, we would actually meet his dad. So actually, mm. so I'm not, I could be talking out of turn here. So please, but I think he wanted him to be like Godot kind of. So, uh, but I will say that James Brolin is an incredibly nice man and, uh, his son is a terrible actor and not successful. Uh, oh wait, he's done. Okay. And, uh, no, but, uh, it was that, that episode was the funniest person. I mean, Adam Devine is so f funny. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then you had Gillian in that, oh, the, all those scenes too. And I thought they need, they need to do a romantic comedy cause they're so funny together. But, um, yeah, we didn't really go back to any of that once once that that had, had happened and that stuff got worked out, then Dan did not go back to it in season 5. And uh but I thought James Brolin was a really nice guy. I don't think he I think he later said it in an interview like I didn't really get the show, but my daughter <laughs> wanted me to be in it and I was like, eh, I understand that. That's pretty cool. I don't know what these kids are listening to these days, but if it makes them happy, but he was a super nice man. So, uh, how about we make a couple of ground rules? Actually, that sounds good. Okay, no hugs. Wouldn't want one. No apologies. Wouldn't accept one. No calling you dad. No expectations. No BS. I think we'll be, that's a, there's, I think that, that was the last part of that. And then I, th I don't think, I think we made a big deal about, um, uh, in season four, me moving next door to Jeff and that sort of. <laughs> That right. That was never mentioned again. I think I, I pop into his apartment <laughs> in the that episode we mentioned, the Christmas uh, yeah. Ma Malcolm McDowell one, and that was it for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I mean, I mean, it is sort of interesting to see what did carry over from that season, like uh, like Abed getting a girlfriend coming back in season, uh, Brie Larson coming back in season five, yeah. which I thought, which I liked, and I would it was interesting to see rewatching to see which elements still managed to sort of survive mm -hmm. the gas leak year and which ones did it I, I guess wrapping up that i feel like it got it got mentioned earlier but i feel like we can't not talk about the dean's costumes and his yeah. outfits i mean they were so i think it came up when we were talking to vet and ken they were recalling i think it was the clip episode where you, mm -hmm. jim you just had to film like a bunch of like costume changes in a row um for you guys was there a, one that stuck out that you always you know maybe for how ridiculous it was or just the, the dedication. Was there one Dean outfit that really stuck out amongst them all? I mean, all of those were always a joy for me. I mean, I think, I think just based on construction and concept where I was half man, half woman was probably <laughs> one of the more like, I mean, that was an involved piece. Just the, the, the fact that they had created this half dress, half suit with a whole Dean outfit uh, it was quite amazing. And I think he, actually we, I put it back on for season four, speaking of season four, when we did that little fake, uh, sitcom opening when we were a mm -hmm. multicam now, uh, I think I put it back on for that, 
that episode. But uh, yeah, I mean, shooting <clears throat> the what I think that was season two or two, maybe where it was so. where you guys went to Universal and we shot all those things, those flashback yeah, episodes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. I think it was two. That was where the majority of it. I will say just uh, in the fun fact slash not fun fact of season four, I guess. But I mean, I wore a ton of costumes in season four, and I do I do know that you know. One of the big things about uh, ep- season five was the, the first episode called Repilot, and Dan was, you know, sort of wanting to reestablish the world for a host of reasons because Jeff Winger had graduated. Um, but also, I, I don't think season five, I think I maybe wore one. You know, it was sort of like a, wanting to get back to things because, you know, the Dean was much more than just just costumes, but that was a big yeah. part of it. And I loved putting them on. So that, that is not a negative for me, but one of my I, favorites was the, you were like, like Lucille Ball, like your black and yeah. white television <laughs> character. Yeah. That was season four. Yeah. I wore yeah. all, I couldn't touch anything. I was completely made up to look like I was in black and white. And that was incredible. It, basically I enjoyed the days of getting to dress up and put a ton of makeup on because the normal makeup they put me on and my clothes. I had basically two pairs of pants and maybe five shirts for the whole six season run as the Dean. And the, just so you know, Jim cares about clothes the way I care about clothes. And I'm saying this honestly. So he'd come in in the same. Oh, he looked, I mean, it was the perfect outfit, but no, I look, uh, I look at the show now and I'm like, good Lord. (laughs) It was, in the best and, possible you know, way. I think Dean, because Jim wasn't on per like when you first signed on, you were like a guest star in the pilot. Yeah. Right. For, I guess and star. then, yeah, then you basically were a guest star for years. Cause at some one point you were like, you know, I want to have my options open. And then it was like, Hey, I need to be a, a series regular, which he did. Cause he had so, you know, he was, he had such, he, he was a huge part of every episode. So, uh, that's why Jim now uh, owns most of West Hollywood. He's very rich. <laughs> yes, he owns I don't more li- property than the Scientologists. I mean, it's so great. I don't live in West Hollywood, but I own it. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't <laughs> want to. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get high on your own supply there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Jim and Joel both for joining us. Um, Joel, you know, pulled double duty having already talked season one with us, and clearly it was important to him. Um, to talk about season four and, and beyond with Jim. So we appreciate both of them taking the time. Um, Chance, uh, we talked a little bit at the top about season four. It's not the same community from seasons one through three, but what, uh, other than Dan Harmon not being there or the quality not being the same, what comes to mind first uh, when we're thinking of season four? I don't know. I felt like this show was in the season, the season environment of the show trying to be what they thought community was, you know? Um, I never felt like they, because I think the thing about Dan Harmon, Dan Harmon's voice, so, Dan Harmon's voice is so specific, you know? And I think it's, there are, they, there are, there are times I felt like they were trying to do their own thing. At times I felt like they were just trying to mimic what they thought the community was. Um, I mean, you talk about this, we talked about this episode, about, about this episode a lot um, on the, with Joel and Jim, but I think, as you said, basic human anatomy, I think, is the stand on the episode. I think it's uh, a mix, a good mix of both worlds. Um, I think it makes the uh, body swap pre- pre- premise work as well as it possibly could in a show like, you know, that's still, no matter how goofy it gets, based in reality. Um, and that's why, I mean, that's my favorite episode of the season, I think. Um, and the one that I remember um, when I look back on this one, I guess. I'm out of here. There you go. My work here is done. You're one and two again. Now you can direct your anger and resentment at each other. Congrats. Classic wrap up. Shut up, Leonard. I've got a picture of your old nose. It was a lateral move. Dean. Dean. Abby. Why is this happening? Well, yeah, when, when we were deciding on what our favorite episodes were at each season, we went out of our way to always pick um, different episodes just so we could, you know, not sit here and just talk about one episode. We could spotlight a few. Um, but we decided pretty quickly with season four, it's basic hum- human anatomy. Like that's the one, there's really no other pick for the best episode. And like you said, there's some hilarious moments in here. You know, like you said, it's the, the whole concept is uh, Troy and Abed, you know, do the Freaky Friday switch. And then there's some funny stuff there, but then there's also some funny stuff with the Dean 
uh, pretending that him <laughs> and Jeff also uh, did the body switch. Um, and his impersonation of, uh, of Jeff is just incredible. Um, I mean, good for Jim Rash. He pulled off his shirt at one point and he, he had some abs there. He, he, uh, he, he was working out for that episode. Um, so there's great stuff there. But then also it's just the emotions in that. And like you really felt it in the mm -hmm. uh, Britta-Troy breakup. And, you know, that uh, basically this was Troy orchestrating all this just because he was afraid of having to do what he knew he had to do, and which was break up with Britta. And just the emotion and the heaviness of that um, really was one of the most emotional um, moments of the show in its whole run for me. First, the easiest part, because it's the most obvious. I'm sorry. I think I proved today that I'm not ready for this. I wanted it to work. It did. I care about you so much, and I love being around you. I just think I'm better as your friend. I personally, the, the Troy Britta pairing, I never was a fan of it or bought it really. Um, so for them to take this relationship that I, I mean, I think probably most people would agree they weren't that invested in, and do something like this with the ending, it made that whole um, storyline worth it just for the yeah. payoff of the breakup. Going into going into season four, I was interested in seeing how that relationship played out. Um, it's weird that like it was a kind of a big part of the season and then stopped being important. And I think we never got to see enough of it for me to care about it one, and, and then to care about it one way or another. And then I think this episode is sort of works in spite of that though, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I said, well, we're not going to go too deep on any other episodes here just because like we said, it's, it's not the same show. There's not as many standouts, but we're going to continue. There's still some great stuff being done by the actors. Um, for our MVP of the season, we, we, went with Joel McHale for a few reasons. A, and this was clear in some of the conversations we had with the cast, um, Joel was pretty instrumental in uh, making sure Dan could come back and that Dan would come back for season five and then subsequently season six. Um, so, I mean, we owe him a debt of gratitude just for that. Um, but then a lot of Jeff's arc throughout the show leading up to this season had been his uh, lack of relationship with his father and that we finally get a payoff to that in the episode uh, Cooperative Escapism and Familial Relations, which you had mentioned, it's a Thanksgiving episode, and James Brolin guest stars as his father, Adam uh, Devine comes in as his brother. Um, what stood out for you um, from that episode or just about what Joel um, kind of was doing in, in, in this season and that episode particularly? It's better than I remember. I, I completely forgot how I did, I did like it. Um... And just because I, th I think it worked emotionally, it was nice to get the, the to get that closure on that bit. It, the Adam Divine stuff, I could have gone either way on, um, but I think Joel just like made that storyline work, uh, especially especially because of his chemistry with Britta, who is also there and intruding on it um, and trying to do her psychiatrist thing or her therapist thing. Um, and the Britta Jeff Perry always is always great as well. Drink. Scotch. 18. Meat. I just want to acknowledge that there are a lot of emotions flowing right now. And you two are probably feeling a strong impulse to sleep with each other. And hey, that's normal. I mean, you mentioned, uh, we mentioned James Rowland and Adam Devine are both in this episode. I will say season four did have an impressive guest roster. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we mentioned those two. Fred Willard, Giancarlo Esposito, Trish, Trisha Helfer, uh, Luke Perry, Brie Larson, Malcolm Adal. There's a lot of great people. Um, that, that show up in season four, um, including, this wasn't his first time, but in our B student corner, the uh, supporting character that we wanted to highlight was Magnitude, uh, Pop Pop. Pop Pop! Played by uh, Luke Youngblood. Pop Pop, I mean, uh, the, the great thing watching, rewatching, Pop Pop never doesn't make everyone happy. Like, no, yeah. I think it was even a paintball episode where everyone was, like, super sad, and he just, like, gives a dying pop-pop, and they're just, like, everyone's, like, cheering, and it, it everyone gets excited again. But this episode, this season, he had a good episode where the dean's trying to lure this rich uh, student, prospective student, Archie, um, who shows up and loves pop-pop uh, so much that he, he wants it to be his, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that leads to the dean saying, Magnitude can't have it anymore. And, you know, then we see Magnitude just doesn't know what to do. 
he's up yeah. all night trying to come up with the new catchphrase. I think one he says is like diggity do, like asking. Yeah. <laughs> I've been up all night trying out new catchphrases. Diggity do. That's why I picked him for the season was because of that one bit of him not having pop pop and just how dejected and confused he seemed to try to figure out what his next uh what his bit would be um and again yeah i mean pop pop it's it's again it's like it's like one of those jokes that like shouldn't work as often as it does but it does it's just so stupid i don't know speaking of jokes that are stupid but still work well this is one not related to magnitude that is personal to you that i want to shout out and, and make you happy Troy, uh, when Jeff disses the Germans in one of the episodes, those German students, uh, Troy says, someone must have changed the channel to USA because I just watched a burn notice. Uh, Dude, oh, <laughs> iconic line, iconic line. I knew, I knew that would make you happy, even more happy than, than Pop Pop makes everyone else. So I had to give you that. Um, at least we got that gem out of season four. I'm not here to argue, Angela Jerkles. Beat it. Oh, someone must have changed the channel to USA because I just watched a burn notice. Well, that's it on season four. Like I said, you know, like I said, mixed bag, you know, not the not peak community, but it still is community. So so we went in on it. Um, that's all the time we have today. But please tune into the next episode. Uh, we'll be talking season five with uh, Danny Pudi, uh, Abed himself. Uh, but until then, class dismissed.